And uh, as in the last two uh, webcasts, I was thinking that I will just give you a quick overview of the roots and inspirations, like where does this land race comes from. This morning there was some discussion, is it just a copy of working out loud? Uh, I will try to argue that it's not a copy, uh, but it's something different, but you will have to make up your mind on that. Uh, then I will tell you something about LanOS, what's uh, contained in the version one, uh, and also show you a little bit of the backstage process, like how, like how is it organized. It's uh, organized in a similar way you do open source development. It's hosted on GitHub. It's created with all, uh, all together with open source tools and so on. I just spent a slide there so you know how um, the backstage of LanOS looks like. Uh, I hope this will take not more than uh, 30 minutes, that we have enough uh, time for an Ask Me Anything. So we will open up the mic. Anybody who wants to can share his video and also his uh, microphone and ask me any questions. I will try to keep uh, an eye on the chat, um, but I will uh, rush to the first 30 minutes and then we will pick up the answers in, in the end afterwards. So, uh, something about the roots and inspirations. Um, uh, one of my major objectives for LanOS was to have sort of a combination of different methods. Uh, most important of objective key results, which was developed by Andy Grove at Intel in the mid of the 1980s, um, and then brought to Google uh, at the end of the 20th century. And this is an agile um, task or objective management system, which connects the levels of the individual, the team and the organization. And this was one of my intentions to bring this in uh, the, the, the uh, the method uh, of working out loud and the circles, also getting things done. Uh, I will show this later on. Uh, another root and inspiration uh, by Stoyan et al. was the development of the personal knowledge management method, the knowledge retention method called expert debriefing uh, 1998. Uh, um, also the getting things done approach by David Allen, 2001. And then the, the history of working out loud with Dave Weiner, uh, his paper or blog on narrating your work, uh, it was in 2009. Then Talon Crumbler was uh, observable work, perhaps one, one or the other of you might have been in this enterprise to uh, zero stream in the past uh, with observable work and the hashtag of overwork. Uh, then Bryce Williams coining the term working out loud. Uh, Cheryl Sandberg, who uh, created the idea of running circles um, with the so-called lean-in circles, similar to Weight Watchers or uh, Mastermind groups in 2013. There's a good YouTube uh, TEDx talk uh, on that. And then, of course, John Stepper, who created the Working Out Loud Circle Method, which was published uh, in his book and later in the Circle Guides in 2015 ongoing. Uh, I collected also in the um, LanOS wiki on GitHub uh, an individual page with roots and inspirations. There are much more, but these eight are the most important one that inspired me for the creation of this guide. So what is LanOS? Uh, it's a guide uh, similar to the Scrum guide or the Wall guide. Uh, it claims to be an operating system for lifelong learning and learning organizations, like the individual knowledge worker should be able to organize his lifelong learning process. If you start today, be prepared to practice LanOS until you die, so to say. Um, and it should be scalable across the levels, individual team and organization, so that the individual learner, the learning team, all these uh, together interconnected, create the learning organization as a living system. Uh, and not the machinery as organizations are seen today. The four learners uh, is not uh, created from scratch. It builds upon existing methods, uh, especially personal knowledge management, objective and key results for the interconnection of the levels, uh, getting things done for personal productivity, uh, working out loud and scrum with the sprint method. So the idea of uh, we will see this later on of the learner's circles is to run in sprints. So you have four sprints a year. Uh, and this is, as I said, ongoing until you die. Uh, and perhaps as you do one sprint on your own, you do another sprint in a circle, uh, another one on your own. But as the, the term lifelong learning indicates, this is an ongoing process. 
and this is also what the, the guide is titled or the website lernoist.org is titled. Uh, it fosters the art of self-directed and lifelong learning. Uh, and this is similar to the Getting Things Done book, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity, sort of a homage to David Allen and his book. The Lernoist guide, which, where you see the, the title page on the right, is available in English and German. German is a machine translation. I will show you later on uh, what the implications are there. Uh, and is published in different formats uh, as PDF, as uh, Word document, DocX, if you want to change it as EPUB, uh, which is a ebook, if you want to use an ebook reader to read it. And also as an HTML version, if you want to copy paste it to a content management system or a wiki or a enterprise social network, you can use the HTML sources. Uh, it's licensed under an open license by the open definition. You can look this up at opendefinition.org. So this means you can uh, download it, use it, modify it, remix it, republish it in any context, personal or commercial, personal or commercial. All the sources you find on uh, lanros.org in the footer line on lanros, also the GitHub repository uh, is linked. You can see um, uh, GitHub more as the machine room. There's all the the sources and and the the make files and so on and lanois.org is more the the website for the end users where you can download it and have a very compact overview some recommendations up front uh sometime when i started um having working out loud circles in the beginning of 2015 uh, I often heard from circle participants, I do not have time to spend one hour on my self-directed learning process or on running this uh, circle program. If this is the case in, in your time management system as well, then I suggest that you start using getting things done standalone because the idea of getting things done is to get more productive, free up time. Uh, and this time that you get through using getting things done by David Allen can be used to run a circle afterwards uh, in a stress-free way and you don't have to do it Friday night at uh, 11 p.m. or so. Uh, you can get a good introduction on uh, gettingthingsdone.com. There are the five steps for using getting things done. So if you feel that you do not have the time uh, to practice LanOS, start there. Another thing is, since uh, LanOS evolved out of working out loud, the ones of you who, who read perhaps about the history of the LanOS canvas, it was named Working Out Loud Plus Canvas. The idea was to use it after running one or two Working Out Loud circuits. Uh, then it had to be renamed because of trademark issues. Uh, but if you never have been in a Working Out Loud circle, I also suggest that you uh, consider running a Working Out Loud circle upfront with the wall guides uh, by Stone, uh, John Stabber because it's less complex. It's not a combination of methods. It's Working Out Loud standalone. And there you can get the, the guides uh, on workingoutloud.com. Also, if you never heard about objective and key results, uh, perhaps it's a good idea to go on YouTube and watch the talk by Rick Clow from Google Ventures. Uh, he's a very good one hour talk explaining how where objective key results came from, from Intel in the, in the mid 80s, uh, how it was brought to Google and how it's done nowadays. And there's also uh, good sources on the OKR forum showing um, company cases like Rantastic, Adidas and so on. Uh, so to have an idea what objective key results is, go there and have a look there. So um, the first thing in the in the wall, in the Lanois guide, if if you open it and and read in it, uh, you will see are the so-called squared wheel people. Uh, you see here it's a photo uh, taken with Lego. Um, perhaps some of you also have the situation that you feel certain drivers that bring complexity to our lives. Um, like globalization, digitization, digital transformation, uh, technology and scientific process, we have the feeling that we, we always have to develop, always have to learn, there's always something new, uh, changes the new normal, so to say. Uh, some describe this with the so-called VUCA world. It was coined in a US military study in 1991. Um, and we have to somehow adapt to this new situation. Uh, but since a lot of people are so much in a rush, 
they have to do so many things in, your day, in their daily work. Uh, perhaps it's somehow like in the image uh, above that there's someone who, who has a tool or method that might help, uh, but you say, no thanks, I'm too busy to do it. So uh, if you have the feeling that you have square wheels, perhaps it's a good idea uh, to take yourself some time or use getting things done to free up some time and then think about uh, what a rounder wheel for you might be. Therefore, we have in the uh, circle the so-called Lenos wheel. Uh, as you can see, it's round, it's not squared. Um, and the idea here is that um, the, the age, the digital age or the knowledge society or whatever you might call it, uh, it's not just a case of using new tools or using new methods. We saw in the past that there were a lot of digital tools implemented like the digital workplace, enterprise social networks, Office 365, but also methods like a hackathon, design thinking, Lego series play and stuff like that, community management. Uh, the idea in Lenos is that you have at least three parts of this wheel to be successful. And this is called mindset, skill set and tool set. I was introduced to this concept by Stefan Peter Roos. Uh, I think um, one of the original sources is by Notash uh, of the, uh, coming from the field of uh, design thinking. And the basic idea here is that uh, if you want to have a wheel that has more performance than a squared wheel, it has to be round. So if you use just the tools, perhaps it might help a little, but your, your uh, wheel might go like this. Uh, if you focus on skills as well, skill development, uh, it might be even better, but it's still having a sort of like a hic hiccup your, your car. Uh, and when you focus also on the mindset, and some say mindset is perhaps the most important, like the, the way we see the world, the attitude we have towards the world. Only if you have these three together, you have um, the best result from your practice and from developing yourself as a lifelong learner. Uh, this, is, this, this concept is detailed in the Lanos guide on a second level. So for mindset, skill set, and tool set, there is a second level, uh, all also built upon uh, existing sources. I will show you this in the next three slides. Uh, in terms of the mindset dimension, uh, in, in the German literature and community, as a response to the VUCA world, we saw something called VOPA. Uh, first by Willem Spuse, then by um, Thorsten Pedri. And uh, WUPA is resolved to these uh, five terms that are on the right as success factors. And in German, it's not as nice as WUPA in German. Uh, but these are networking, trust, openness, participation, and agility. And for the learner's guide, we adopted the, the format of the Scrum. Uh, manifesto. I don't know if you, you have confirmed with that. You can look this up if you Google for Scrum or Agile Manifesto. Uh, you have always this, you want something more than something else. Uh, so for the mindset dimension, we say we need more net, we need networking over isolation. Uh, we need trust in, in employees in the society over suspiciousness. Uh, we want to have openness over silos, participation over exclusion and agility over stability. So it's not going from one to, <laughs> to the other, but uh, having more of, of something we don't have uh, today. I just unmute you again. You can, you can unmute yourself if you want to say something uh, at any time. So this is the mindset dimension. Uh, in terms of skill set, uh, there was big discussion going on in our community. Uh, what we came up as a second level is a combination of the so-called 21st century skills. Uh, perhaps you know this PISA uh, framework uh, by OECD. Andreas Schleicher presented it on Republica 2013. Uh, the idea here is that uh, you have this 4C model. Uh, the, the critical skills for the 21st century are creativity and innovation, critical thinking and problem solving, communication and collaboration. And of course, uh, in terms of digital transformation, uh, all citizens, all, all people living on the world lead some digital literacy as well. Uh, and we use this as just a cross competence because you can combine communication in the digital sphere or creativity fostered by digital tools. Uh, so we have this 4C model and then the digital literacy uh, uh, across, lying across. Uh, 
And we also didn't invent something new here, but we just used the um, so-called DICCOM 2.1 framework by the European Commission. It's a digital competence framework for citizens uh, with eight proficiency levels and a lot of examples for use, which will be rolled out in the European Union uh, starting next year, I think in 12 or 13 countries. Uh, it's also going to schools, going to high schools and so on. So we said that this is, is ju are just the skills that we want to push with LanOS as well. Um, you can look this up. I have the sources. You can Google it and you will find the, the PDF by the European Commission explaining it as well as the 21st century skills framework. There's also a good uh, Wikipedia article on that. Then in terms of the tool set, um, we put something in. It's called the uh, Conversation Prism. Uh, right now it's there in version 5 by uh, Brian Solis and Chess3, uh, showing somehow how the, the digital ecosystem evolved and what are the tool classes we are confronted with today. But if we think about lifelong learning, perhaps not for everybody, uh, every tool is of the same relevance. Uh, so we uh, did some thinking on how to condense the list a bit. And we came up with five tool classes that we want to push and want to uh, help people to learn with exercises and circle experience and so on. And this is on the one side, uh, the class of uh, office and productivity, like uh, file sharing services like Dropbox, uh, uh, personal notebooks, Evernote, OneNote, Office 365. Uh, then the whole uh, class of tools around chat and messengers like uh, Microsoft Teams, Rocket Chat, Threema, uh, WhatsApp, and so on. We chat um, social networks, internal and external. Uh, always when I talk about tools, it can be that you want to push it in a uh, company or organizational internal space, uh, like an enterprise social network or an external space, uh, like LinkedIn, Twitter, and so on. Here is tools like IBM Connections or Jive, or Mastodon, Twitter, Workplace by Facebook. Um, then the fourth class we want to push is video conferencing um, because we also see that circles often take place in a virtual uh, and, and not co-located scenario. Um, uh, and uh, therefore people have to have skills like using GoToMeeting, Skype, Skype for Business and so on, WebEx, Zoom, what we are using right now. Uh, and the fifth and perhaps the oldest dimension is the dimension of weblogs and wikis. Uh, for contributing personal thoughts uh, and, and documenting things like uh, DocuWiki, Confluence, uh, LinkedIn articles, and so on. In the future, on the on the GitHub side, there will be tutorials on how to use these tools in, in a constellation where you run a circle, but also uh, on its own. There will be uh, exercises um, on training these skills. Uh, for the core, um, from uh, the Scrum dimension, we used the, the sprint metaphor. Uh, a Leno sprint has 13 weeks. It's week zero to week 12, like zero, one, and then up to 12. Uh, you will recognize the pattern from the wall circles as well. Um, uh, five people meeting together, having objectives, making exercises. Um, there's one difference. Um, the, we, we saw that the week zero is a good idea to have for sprint planning. Like, uh, who is the moderator? Oops, uh, I just came on the keyboard. Who's the moderator? What what kind of um, uh, what kind of uh, exercises do we do? Uh, which do we leave out and so on? What kind of infrastructure do we use? Uh, and then the week one for creating objectives in this format, objective key result. For those of you who have not been in the last webcast on objective key results, just as a few remark, uh, when, you, when you create an OKR, you define an objective which is uh, qualitative, and then you define max four key results that you can use to measure uh, if you reach your objective or not. Uh, this is done in week one. Uh, and I see that someone raised their hand, just a moment, oops. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Simon. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, there are some questions in the chat. Yeah. Might you uh, just read it out loud, perhaps? Yes. Uh, one question from Lutz. Impressive how the German claim called networking trust. 
Oh, I, I don't get I don't know. I don't know what is really. Um, is it urgent? I will wait. And one is uh, Elena Stockinger. Okay, I'm back. Perhaps I'm, I, I just uh, go through the slides and then we have enough time to, uh, perhaps the persons can ask the questions with audio and then it's easier to, to understand. Um, okay. Okay, so you have this yeah. prints and, you. yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I uh, didn't want uh, <laughs> to disturb, but uh, uh, I did. Um, I think that's the best idea to uh, uh, follow on uh, the presentation and uh, the yeah. questions after. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then what we did in the in the workflow of the sprint is to uh, add two pit stops um, when working on uh, key results. Uh, perhaps uh, someone of you knows the book, uh, The Lean Startup, with the concept of the minimum viable product, where you say, uh, we are not able nowadays to, to work on a very complex uh, product for a very long time. We need to have short uh, iterations and create new versions of the product. So the idea here is to... Uh, define an objective and key results in week one, uh, and then have a first minimal viable product at pit stop one, another one at pit stop two, and then the final product or key result uh, in week 12. Uh, have it finished, uh, so to say, and also show it in, in, in the circle and the weekly. Um, what we also saw is the fifth point on the slide, um, that in uh, at least in the wall circles I've been, that the time uh, for running the exercises is not uh, not enough. Uh, like some circular meetings uh, take a lot of more time than the one hour that people had. Uh, so what is suggested in the Lanos guide is to have uh, used the flip classroom approach. Everyone in the circle um, does the exercises upfront, and then you have the the circle time together to discuss results and help yourself uh, to get this um, peer support process ongoing. Uh, the combination with the OKRs you see uh, below, uh, perhaps also the hint if you want to go in detail, uh, have a look at the OKR webcast, was the, the second one, the last one. Uh, when you practice OKR in your organization, uh, objectives and key results are defined on the individual level, like you, like everybody has one. Uh, or uh, more than one, uh, three per quarter, uh, four times a year. Uh, these OKR are published in the company. So at Google, if you uh, look for Larry Page, you find on his profile his OKRs. They are transparent. And the reason why they have to be transparent is that you can cascade it across the organization. So you have OKRs on the um, organizational level, on the team level, on the individual level, you have the rules that at least half of the OKRs should come from bottom up, like you define it, it's similar to a wall circle where you say, which is the goal that I choose for the circle. And therefore in the, in, in the Lanos guide, we suggest that the sprints are synchronized, that the sprints start in, in the quarters of a year, like January, February, March, April, May, June and so on. Uh, this makes it easier to synchronize the OKR process across the levels from individual to organization. And at the same time, uh, it helps you to uh, switch circles because everybody in the organization in this case uh, starts or ends uh, circles at the same time. So this is the, the OKR embedding in the, in the Lanos guide. Um, for the circle, it's just like with mastermind groups or learning circles, which have been the blueprint for the world circles or the world circles itself. Uh, the circle is just a peer support group. It's like when you go running or training for a marathon. Uh, it's easier if you, uh, if you like have the support of two or three or four other guys. Uh, at the moment, there's um, one person in the Facebook wall group who's doing the experiment to run a wall circle as just one person, which seems to work very well. Uh, I think there's also nothing against, speaks nothing against uh, to practice Lanos in this style. So for me, for example, I normally have uh, one or two circles a year and one or two sprints I do on my own. And in the circles, sometimes I have four people, five people at the moment I have one with three, but the next sprint I will do on my own. So uh, typically when you do OKR or getting things done, you do this on your own, but I think there's a 
big power in combining it with doing it in a circle, doing it on your own. Everybody has to find its own rhythm. Uh, the circle size of uh, four to five people, I think, has been proven to be a good size from, from the working out loud experience. Uh, mastermind groups are suggested for seven to nine, lean-in circles for 12, which I think is too much, but I think something between one and five is good. And of course, the circles might meet face-to-face -face or virtually. Uh, I think the tools for having virtual meetings are getting better and better. So uh, at least when the people know each other and there's also already trust in the circle, uh, should be no problem to run a circle in a virtual way as well. Uh, one remark uh, towards the Lernos cutters, which is this is a uh, very nice sketch note that uh, Carl uh, posted on Twitter this morning, uh, which I like very much. Um, uh, there was some discussion if this is just a copy paste from the uh, from the VOL exercises, since the structure of the cutters and the content runs along the exercises of the wall guides, and of course this is uh, true. Um, I needed to have a way to modify the, the exercises in a way that I can add uh, information on how to use the canvas, for example, or uh, bring in this OKR idea to the, um, to the exercises. And since the wall guide is published under the, uh, under the CC BY and C and D license, a lot of, lot of uh, letters there, uh, I couldn't just copy paste the content in the Lernos guide, which uh, because this would have been a copyright violation uh, because ND means that uh, you are not allowed to modify the content. So this is the reason why I had to create an, an alternative version, so to say, of the uh, exercises. I named this cutters. Uh, this is coming from uh, software development education where you run uh, dojos, uh, which is uh, people, software developers come together and learn a new coding skill, for example. And then there are co uh, uh, catalogs of cutters, which are predefined exercises uh, where you can pick one from and do it together as a team, practice together to be a better coder. Uh, in the future, there should be much more cutters in the in the learner system. Uh, also, according to this mindset, skill set, tool set dimension, uh, to also train skills um, to use social networks, uh, video conferencing, uh, to practice openness, and so on. So this will be extensively extended in the future. But of course, you can just uh, leave these cutters out. Uh, it's also only in the appendix, and uh, you can use the original wall exercises by John Stepper. Um, the Lernerless Canvas uh, is a visual framework to structure the thinking process in a sprint. What I experienced is that people have difficulties to uh, have an idea what their goal might be. So from uh, getting things done and personal knowledge management, the uh, left side of the canvas came up. Uh, where you have to have uh, a clear idea of what your roles are in the organization or outside your activities, your projects, uh, also your fields of knowledge, your skills, and you list it there and you think about it. If Are there any objectives or uh, yeah, objectives and resulting key results uh, that came from these dimensions? Uh, this way uh, you can uh, choose goals that come from uh, task or projects that you, ha that you have anyways um, in your organization. Uh, the nine sections correlate with the cutters or exercises. So at the cutter documentation in the Lanos guide, you always have short notes when the result of a cutter can be documented in um, the canvas. And you see below a photo of a, a canvas of my current circle. Uh, so normally you don't write on the uh, canvas like Alex Osterwalder, the creator of the business model, always says. He says, this is why post-it notes were invented, because as long as your objectives are fluid and changing and so on, the suggestion is in, in the Lano sprint that at least in week four, the objective is defined and doesn't change anymore, so this MVP process can start. Um, uh, but in, in this time when it changes, then it's a better idea to uh, do it with post-it and change it. And I will always uh, take a photo of my canvas and put it in the social network of my circle so everybody can see um, uh, what my current canvas is looking like. 
Uh, last but not least, uh, or pre-last, uh, the circle template. Uh, you can download a file in the format 1PKG, PG, uh, which is the template format for uh, OneNote. I don't know if every, anybody knows OneNote. It's a personal notebook that comes uh, with the Microsoft Office or Office 365. Uh, if you click on the one PG, PKG file, uh, just a new uh, OneNote notebook opens with, with the pre-structure. In this pre-structure, you have a welcome section uh, over here explaining everything. Uh, each circle member has, oops, uh, has its own uh, page in the section circle members. Uh, you have uh, the checklist for week zero, week one to 12, also all the cutters, and at the end, uh, a collection of links with the uh, links for getting things done, uh, objective key results, VOL, and so on, just as link collection. And as you can see here, uh, you can use uh, OneNote to have checkboxes and uh, structure and plan your, your process. In the circle, there's also one very good OneNote app for smartphones or tablets. Uh, so you have your documentation for the circle always on the go, like you have it with you. If I have an idea, uh, there's a, uh, a change in my key result, for example, or I want to check an exercise if I did it, I can just put out my smartphone, uh, open the OneNote notebook and check it or mark it. Uh, last slide as an input, uh, as I uh, promised a uh, short look in the LANOS backstage. Um, we use the uh, source code repository GitHub as a central repository for version control. So everything is transparent. The whole content is transparently managed like open source software. Um, we use Atom as Markdown editor. Uh, this is a little bit nerdy. Uh, Markdown is um, sort of a pre-format for HTML. It's a very lightweight, um, um, it's called hypertext language, so to say, or mark, markup language is the better term. So you sort of code the content and then translate it in something else. And for this, we use Pandoc, which is a tool to convert markdown to PDF, to uh, Word documents, to uh, EPUB ebook format and so on. Uh, I think in the end, we, we could translate to at least 61 formats, also Confluence Wiki content and so on. This is the reason why we didn't write this um, guide in Word, uh, but used Markdown. Uh, we use Azure Cognitive Services for machine translation. The uh, Lanos Guide version one was created in English and then run through machine translation for the German version. And it took me about five to six hours to refine it. Um, the plan for the future is to have more versions, uh, but I have to find people who would like to uh, do the final reading since in Mandarin or uh, Arabic language or so, I'm not native enough to do the correction in the end. Uh, on the front end, we use GitHub pages as a uh, website. It's just lanos.org. It's also a GitHub page. It can be translated by Google Translate to different languages. Uh, there's lanos.feeder.io, which is a uh, platform to collect ideas for improvements. Uh, so you can, if you have an idea to improve the guide, you can just put your idea there. Other people can vote on the idea, vote it up or down, comment it. Uh, and then there's the Telegram group. Telegram is a secure and free messenger with the URL t.me slash lanos. Uh, you can go there. The, the idea here is to uh, provide users with the possibility to have uh, exchange about the use of um, lanos. So uh, a lot of things said. Uh, and a little bit more than the 30 minutes it took for me to go through, but now is uh, the time to ask me anything. I saw that uh, in the chat, there are some questions. I will open the chat on my computer and uh, you can open up your mic and just can ask anything that you want. I will go through the chat here. Uh, I see this question from Lutz. How is the German claim called networking? Trust, uh, Lutz. Did you mean the uh, the the German acronym for uh, WUCA? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I think it was called WOPA. Uh, the the exact uh, uh, transition is in the German version of the guide. I think it was uh, Vernetzung, Offenheit, Partizipation, and Agilität. 
and uh, in addition to Vernetzung, there came Vertrauen, trust. So this was WOPA by uh, Willem Spuse and then WOPA plus with this additional we by uh, Thorsten Petri. Okay, thank you. And I see from Werner, I'm missing a structure and some examples for face-to-face -face methods and formats. I think they are as important as tech tools. Yes, it's, that's, that's true. Um, uh, in, in this dimension of skill set, uh, there's, for example, the, um, uh, the, the skill of working together with others in a creative way. And we are thinking in the next step to also add a third level to the structure uh, and list methods and formats to work together there. So, for example, if you have uh, worked together in a creative way, you could have a Kanban board or uh, a hackathon or a FedEx day or something like this. I'm not sure if this answers your question, Werner, but this is how I interpreted it. It is an interesting one by Rainer Bartel. <laughs> 13, 13 weeks for circles is only sufficient in an ideal world. In reality, there will be breaks due to holidays, vacation, etc. How can you avoid that some circles are running beyond the schedule end date? Um, I, I'm not sure if there's a... I, just, Rainer, I think we have clarified it in the chat already. This only would affect individuals who, plan, who are planning to start the next circle right afterwards and then in the next quarter when it's synced in a quarterly uh, schedule in the company. Uh, that means that this individual would have to run two circles in parallel until the first one is finished. Yeah. But it's, that, that it's not like, it's not a, a, a sub project of a bigger project on a critical path. So yeah. uh, you can then start your next circle in Q3. Yeah, right. Too, too long for Q1. I think this would also be interesting uh, to discuss with uh, John Stepper from the Wall Sphere, perhaps. Um, uh, there's always this, this discussion if uh, a circle runs for 12 ongoing weeks or runs for 12 weeks, but if, the, if one of the circle members is on holiday, it stops and then uh, you have to, uh, to schedule it after the holiday, for example. Um, the idea in Lanra is, is to not let it stop. It's more like a school. Uh, the school starts at day one and it runs until the holidays. Um, uh, and this is because, uh, and if you, if you miss some homework because you're ill or something, you have to redo your, the homework afterwards. And I see no other way if you want to have uh, sprints running in sync across the levels because of the, the OKR scheme uh, that a team the team OKRs and the individual OKRs are in sync. Uh, I see no other methods uh, or no, no way to have circles that are not synced or that are running free flow. Um, perhaps this might be a barrier. Of course, if you do it on your own or if it's just five people across several organizations, no problem to start a Lanos uh, circle to any given time. But uh, if you want to have it in sync and use OKR in the organization, I think you need to have this, uh, this rhythm, so to say, um, in the organization. So if you use uh, the Learn OS uh, in the company, in this company-wide structure, then it's already much more established than some bottom-up um, right. um, so, yeah. working out loud courses yeah. where priority of company project will always uh, a company project will always have priority and then some people won't be able to join a circle because of some other challenges in their day-to-day -day work uh, and then the circle has to step back but if that is part of the corporate organization structure then mm -hmm. it, it will be by definition the top priority or so right right and that's also when you when you uh have a look inside the um, OKR community, for example, there are, in the original uh, idea, uh, you have in one quarter five objectives max, so not 20 or so, but five. And the rule is that uh, two or three come bottom up and the rest comes top down. 
uh, if you look at the OKR community, there are a lot of slides saying that we that we leave out the individual level and doing OKRs only on the organization and team level, uh, or that all the OKRs come top down, which I think is not a good idea because uh, all the experience we made with people want to have Slack time, Google time, 20% time, uh, and also a lot of the success of VOL, having this free space, being in a circle, following your own goals, comes from this bottom-up definitions of goals and objectives as well. So I think it's a, uh, a good idea, also when you implement it in an organization, to leave these two or three objectives that come from the employees or from the people running Planos. I see another question uh, from Lutz. Mm. He asks if there is an open source or FLOSS uh, alternative to OneNote. Uh, FLOSS stands for free, free and open source software, free Libre and open source software to be uh, exact. Um, I would say not exactly. I know some people who run their, uh, instead of OneNote run uh, Evernote, I did it before as well. Uh, we will have a second tool for implementing the circle, um, uh, the circle template uh, on a platform called TiddlyWiki. Uh, TiddlyWiki is a self-contained HTML5 wiki. Uh, so there you have anything inside besides the notebook metaphor and the sections, but you have pages, you can interlink it, you can uh, edit with uh, multiple persons on it. Uh, and if you want to look this up, you can have a look at uh, tiddlywiki.org or .com. Just search for tiddlywiki, then you will find it. Uh, the reason why we, we created the first version in uh, OneNote was that uh, we are using OneNote a lot. We're in a lot of uh, Office 365 projects where OneNote is used. Uh, so it was an easy way to uh, just use OneNote. And for me personally, I think it's a very good platform for a circle. Uh, even in addition with Microsoft Teams, which you can use uh, as a video conferencing tool. But of course, there should be a FLOSS alternative as well. So I would look for TiddlyWiki, but if anyone has another idea, I would be very happy on Feeder.io or Twitter to uh, hear about it and then add it to the Lamos guide. So anyone else who want to ask a question? Meanwhile, I have a look at the chat. <laughs> One month holiday for One the month holiday. company, I see. Very good. Yeah, Gerhard wrote about the, the Christmas season. Yeah, very good idea. Uh, we had one, one uh, whiteboard photo, I can put it on Twitter somewhere, mm -hmm. where we tried to put together the whole uh, like national, uh, what is it, uh, fire talk, holidays, uh, and, and try to find a way to... Um, uh, to put the four sprints each year in a way that we don't collide with Christian holiday, but then you have Chinese holiday and in Indonesia, you have uh, other holidays and so on. Uh, so we ended up with not a very good solution, but just take the quarters of a uh, Julian calendar. Um, and if your company perhaps uh, the, the reporting cycle runs on another base, not every company has the, the whole year as a reporting cycle. Uh, it might be a good idea to shift that, or if you operate in China, uh, to shift that around uh, your holidays. Um, so this four quarters according to the calendar is just an, a suggestion. Uh, if you and your context need another one, you can do this. And you can also shorten uh, circles or sprints uh, to fit the holiday seasons, but we weren't able to create an approach that uh, fits in every, in every context, so to say. Perhaps when we collect experience, uh, it might be uh, that there's a, best, a better way uh, to synchronize, but until then it's just the, the normal calendar. I saw that already the link for TiddlyWiki is there. Perhaps if you use it, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky uh, since the browsers um, like Chrome, Firefox and so on, for security reasons uh, hindered the, um, the browser or the operating system hindered the browser to write on your disk. Uh, so it's a little bit tricky to put this TiddlyWiki in a place where uh, you have read and write access. But there's a lot of documentation and discussion for this issue on, uh, on the TiddlyWiki pages. 
So I am at the end of the chat. Perhaps I will give a few more seconds or minutes if everybody wants to open the mic, ask something or uh, Werner's asking, is there a reason to take 12 weeks for a circle? Why not plan for 10 weeks? Yeah, the, the reason is just the OKR cycle. Uh, OKR R is done in uh, three, main, uh, three months periods. Uh, and if you have uh, 52 weeks a year and divided by four, you have this 13 weeks. Uh, and I think uh, in, in working out loud, this 12-week um, um, week circle rhythm is quite okay. And I think a lot of people uh, and also some companies are using this week zero uh, to have some planning. So there was the, the idea that one plus 12 times four to get uh, for one year is quite okay. If you have 10, you might have a break between the, the sprints, so to say, it's also possible. Uh, perhaps we have to fine tune this in the future. Uh, Rainer asks, if, uh, is there a need to have four circles per year? What about three circles, leaving room for delays, holidays, etc.? Of course. Uh, also there the answer, the default in OKR is four, but you can run in, in, in three sprints as well. Um, and what I think is important, uh, you can also have Lanoi sprints without having a circle. Uh, like for myself, I really appreciate the peer support in the circle and it helps a lot. But uh, sometimes when I want to concentrate and focus strictly on an objective, it's also good to have a sprint uh, without peer support. So it might be that you have three, three sprints a year, uh, one or two with circle and, and one or two uh, just on your own. It's like when you're used to, to practice getting things done, you're used to do your weekly review on your own. And there are people who like this and other need the peer support. And, and for me personally, it's good to have a mix in between, to have some sprints a year with peer support and some without. Zedelmal uh, just says, wow, great learnings today. Thanks, Simon. Thanks uh, to you for participating. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, right. Especially with more catas in the future, I think the 10, 12, 13 weeks don't matter if you go on after uh, from from Magnus and Werner, the discussion. Um, you, you find in this, in the Lano circle uh, in week zero, the decision if you if you enhance your sprint with, with exercises, catas or not. If you don't do it, it's called in the guide um, OKR style. You just use the circle to, to track progress on your ex objective and key results. And then you can bring down the, the time span for the weekly meeting to 15 minutes because it's just everybody saying according to OKR guides, uh, what have I done until the last um, weekly meeting? Uh, what is hindering me to do uh, or to have progress on my objectives? And what will I do until the next? And then have short discussion though you can have a weekly with four to five people in, in 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and of course you can say if you go full blown with all the exercises, like you could do it when you do your first wall circle, you need this hour or a lot of circles need more than one hour. Uh, and I think in the future, there will be some sort of styles to configure uh, sprints when you want to focus on learning a special skill, like a special method or a special tool, then you will have catas uh, to train this tool and you configure the, the exercises for the sprint in week zero. And uh, perhaps in, in the context of the Lenos guide, we will have these styles to download. So you will have an, um, a sheet with a suggestion of exercises that you can use in the next sprint, for example. Ah, okay. I see in the chat there's all, all already decided on, on three circles per year as magical number. I will, I, will, uh, I will give this back to the OKR community and ask them if they can change it in their guides and their documentation. And Werner says you will stop after 42 circles. Perhaps someone can calculate if this is the uh, estimated time span of an uh, adult living here. So uh, lifelong learning becomes reality after 42 circles. Uh, Magnus asks, so uh, if your company has no OKR at the moment, there are no timing problems, aren't there? Uh, that's right. Uh, the, the idea was that an individual can uh, take the learner's guide and start on his own. So like I started with getting things done in 2006. I just bought the book. I wrote some blog posts by David Allen and then I started. 
Um, and, and the idea is that you can uh, use Leno as in a, in a bottom-up approach, in a grassroots approach. So one is starting and infecting others and, and they just do it. Uh, or you start top down, like the top management says, we want to implement OKRs and, and use this approach. Or what um, uh, Nonaka calls the middle up down approach. It starts somewhere in the middle management or middle, middle executive level uh, and then spirals out like they know the, uh, the vision of top management and the, the problems uh, on, on the bottom line, so to say. Uh, and, and you implement it in a spiraling process. But uh, to answer it shortly, if the company doesn't have OKRs, you can use the OKR method to sharpen your goals when you want to use Leno S to track goals. Uh, perhaps if you want to just uh, use it to learn networking, uh, you, you can have a, only a qualitative goal and don't use Leno S for goal tracking or don't use OKR at all. But then I think you, uh, you better go with the uh, working out loud guys, guides. Yeah, Rainer uh, had another question regarding the pit stops. Um, sounds like an interesting uh, concept. Can you explain a bit more? Um, the uh, the pit the original idea for the pit stops came uh, from a reverse mentoring program uh, at a customer of ours, uh, where you where you do reverse mentoring with executives, uh, and then you have a, in German it's boxen stop. You have two defined times uh, in the process of six months where you have a look on if, if you're on track, if everything works fine. And the idea of the pit stops in the Lano S sprint is uh, that you have one milestone where your objective should be fixed. This is after or in week four, uh, because I experienced that a lot of people in the circle, uh, they weren't sure about their goal until week eight, nine, 10, 11. So, okay, you can say, uh, then you make just another circle and, and then the goal is fixed. But the idea in Leno is to, is to have it at least in week four. And then you have to work and show uh, your key results. Uh, this is this uh, minimum, minimum viable product idea to not procrastinate on the, um, uh, on the key results, but to show something, show your key result in a way that works in week eight. Uh, and get feedback from your peer support group. Uh, let them help you. Uh, let them challenge your ideas and, and your concept. And then you have another four weeks until uh, week 12 to have at least a second uh, iteration of your key result. If your objective is clear in week zero or week one, uh, you have three iterations because you have one, one MVP until week four, one MVP until week eight, and then another until week 12. So this might help you to to create results in, a, in an agile and, and iterative way. So another look in the chat. I look forward to discuss learners with all attendees of CLC 18 in, next week in Castle. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, the next events will be uh, to have uh, a session on Lano S at the corporate learning camp in Castle. Um, this is next week. Then uh, two or three weeks later, uh, there will be a knowledge camp in Munich. I will prepare uh, and propose a session there as well. Uh, in the meantime, you can just have a look, uh, read through the guide, have a look if it, if it works for you, if you want to use it. Join the Telegram group if you need help. Uh, I will put also updates there. If you have feedback on improving the guide, just use this URL, uh, lanos.feeder.org to put your ideas there. Uh, and I'm looking for individuals who want to run a circle with this version one of the guide and also organizations who, who want to pilot it with perhaps two or three guides inside an organization running on an enterprise social network. So if you want to, to pilot it, just send me a message uh, on one of the channels, Twitter, email or whatever. And if you want to use it as an organization as well. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. I think we're in time. There's uh, four or three minutes left. I will leave the session open until five. So if there are further questions, uh, I, I try to answer it. And then thank you all for being here, spread the word and have fun with Lano S. Thanks very much.